So George, last night both of us went to go and see A Quiet Place Day One separately. Separately, it's sort of we we had, we had to see it basically at the same time. Yeah, we both we were like we should see. <laughs> we both need to see it. Um, and yeah, so this is the third Quiet Place film, but it's not part three. We've had nope. ones and twos. This is day one prequel set, as you can imagine by the title. The first day of the alien invasion. Which some people online have been calling like the Death Angels or something. Oh. I'm like, they've not got a name. Okay. They're, well, just, there you go. they're just sort of spider like sound creatures, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Quiet Place Day One takes us back to the day one of the invasion. We don't, we're not uh, with John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. This is just set in the heart of New York City. We're greeted with this very loud. Uh, a, a, a New York City landscape <laughs> horn yeah. thing and there's this thing that uh, the, the mm. average sound decibel for New York City is 90 decibels which is uh, it's the same volume as a scream yeah it's a really good opening line yeah. been to New York City knows how knows how, uh, knows how loud it is uh, we follow uh, Lupita Nyong'o's character Sam who is at a uh, a hospice. She is terminally ill and she is um, looked after by a uh, Ruben played by Alex Wolf, who I almost didn't recognize for a minute because a he's, yeah, he's got a beard and he's got lots of hair. And, you know, she's allowed to sort of take certain day excursions, but what she really wants is just to have a New York slice of pizza. Mm. Um, and she, on, on her trip to New York, all With hell her service cat. With her, oh, feline performance, George. Feline. We'll get back to this. Uh, it's it's, a it's very the feline, feline performance, performance to beat. Um, with, with her very trusty cat, who's very loyal, uh, goes into the city and while she's there, all hell breaks loose. Mm. And it's very clear from the outset that these uh, these aliens, these uh, sort of what they call xenomorph type uh, creatures will we'll, we'll are only reacting when you make noise. And of course, New York City, the loudest city in the world, filled with people, filled with car alarms, explosions, everything. Uh, it immediately goes into lockdown. She is uh, at one point with Jimon Hauzu's character mm. with collections of people Who's waiting in, in silence. Quiet Place Part 2. Yes, he's there. And um, she also meets up with a character called Eric, played by Joseph Quinn. Um, and we are sort of with these characters for the duration of the film. Mm. Most of it's there to be discovered when you watch it. But that is Quiet Place Day 1. George, how did you find... Day so one. I think what I will say is it, it, interesting about Quiet Place Part, no, Quiet Place Day One, um, is that I respect the fact that it's actually pitching itself slightly differently. In that I would say the first two Quiet Place movies are about survival, yeah. pure and simple. Which I think this is much more because of the fact that you've got a terminally ill character, it's much more about trying to find meaning in death, really. Yeah. And there's obviously the literal death of the fact that she's term terminally ill, but also the death of civilization, the death of all, and that's kind of how. Joseph Quinn's character operates as kind of world weary, walking around in a very baggy suit, looking like a kind of salesman, looking actually, mm. you know, not kind of reminiscent of the photos you would see of like 9 11 of these people. You know, There's a lot of their, parallel imagery so, of like ash and, and the buildings. dust. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I respect that. I think what we talked about with Long Legs, Michael Monroe's face being so brilliant for the, for the camera. Oh, and yeah. I think Lapita Nyonga, uh, just with five minutes into the movie, I was like, yes, you're so perfectly cast. You're, you're so, yeah. oh, we all would know that you're a fantastic actor. I almost like, forgot. I I was reminded yeah. that she's and really good. It's you carry so much. The, the film is carried on her face, mm. and 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 in complete silence as well. Her expression is doing so much, mm. and she's got a brilliant expression. And, yeah. and these wide eyes and the sort of the way she covers her mouth, fantastic. I I I, I really liked that. Um, I think on the whole, I thought it was kind of like fine. I mm. like the Quiet Place movies. I yeah. loved the first one. I thought it was great fun. Second one. Also light, basically the same movie, but also light. This one is probably the, the lesser of the three. And for me, the, the big thing was like, I really feel like you've stretched the concept to, to breaking point now. Because most of the film I was thinking to myself, what constitutes a sound? What constitutes mm, noise? Okay, yeah. Because there is a moment in this film where, uh, you know, I'm not going to say exactly what happens, because I don't want to spoil it, but where a, a creature, one of these creatures has its, you know, when it opens up its sort of exoskeleton and it has its real, like, hearing thing. And it's right next to one of our main characters. You'd think heartbeat, I'm, I'm anything. Thinking, yeah. I can hear you if I'm sat across from you, James. Yeah. This extraterrestrial hearing aid should Any be breath. able to hear anything. And I and I think sometimes I felt a little bit jerked around by mm. the way it would use the rules. And sometimes these creatures move at the speed of light. Yeah. And sometimes they move very slowly. So... Just a couple of times, which was kind of pulling me out of there's it. There's certain rules where they say, like, when it's raining or thundering, you can be a lot more, uh, you have yes, a lot more leeway to make sound out. because you're drowned out by everything else. And there's moments where they want to break down a door and there's a thunderstorm happening yeah. and they wait for the lightning and the delay and smash the door at the moment. You're like, okay, nice little rules there. Yeah. But yeah it's, um, it's, it's, it's sort of, I thought the same thing when the ear was yeah. next to it. I thought, surely. Yeah. Any movement of your stomach rumbling, yeah, yeah, like yeah. breathing, yeah. blinking, that all has a noise. But yeah. Um, I. Uh, I think that um, 
I, and I like the f- fact this film, it's much more introspective kind of film. Is, mm. it, I would actually argue that it, even though it's set in New York, it's very loud. It's, it's the quietest of the quiet places. And that, yeah. The actual moments of dialogue between the characters are very, very limited and very whispered and almost written out. You know, at least in the other ones, you would have Killian Murphy and Emily Blunt mm. talking or John Krasinski, et cetera. Um, I think that, so I, I found it a little bit underwhelming. I mean, the great thing about all quiet place movies is that they are short. Yeah. This is 99 minutes. The previous one was 96. The first, first one was 91. 91. It's like, that, that, and that's I think great. They, that's a good knowledge of their concepts and how long I think you yeah. can string people along on it. Um, I think that uh, I, I, I liked a kind of emotional dynamic with Lupita Nyong'o's character. I would say that I think that I felt Joseph Quinn was let down by the writing of his character. Right. I would have liked much more substance to him. He comes in much later in the film than I kind of thought. And I was kind of, I think I, my imagination was filling in blanks of what his character could do, but I would have preferred that to actually been part of his character. And you kind of, you kind of get one line about him and the rest of it, he's kind of world weary and there. And I, I, I wanted a bit, a bit more, mm. I'm a bit more from that, but it, it's fine. I, I did, I just, particularly in the second act, uh, sorry, the, the, the second half, I just mm. thought, you know, um, okay, I like this concept, but I think I'm, I'm running out of things to, to do with this concept. Yeah. I, I, so th- what I like about it, and I think this is true for the other Quiet Place films, but I think mostly in this one, is that most scenes in most films, broadly speaking, dialogue is the primary sound used to yeah. tell a story and score and sound effects mm. supplement it. Not all the time, but that is the primary way in which we use sound to tell a story. And what's really nice about the Quiet Place films is that now becomes completely tertiary mm. to sound effects. And I think the filmmakers and everyone involved in making that film is having a lot of fun with that inversion. Mm. And I think as audience members, I find it really fun to be using different tools for tension and to be understanding the world mm. and the ways in which things progress through sound effects. And the sound design is really well done done in it so that i think is really well done and fun i thought the pizza side quest narrative direction was a little bit loose if you Mm, ask me i'm like really we're gonna risk this and do this i understand there's this idea of like what does it mean to to live and what are we fighting for so that i was like okay i guess we've got a movie here that's fine yeah but like the other quiet place movies it has heart it does sort of impact you and i think towards the end i thought that was nice i enjoyed it yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And actually, good sequences of, yeah. of people being quiet. I would say the, the, the first act, when it really is day one, is really strong. Really. And, and, and these monsters, like with the other ones, they move really violently and ferociously and mm. they're the really high velocity and the sense mm. of threat is, is there. They're big, they're, they're, they're violent. Yeah, but I would say, would you say it's still the lesser of the three? Yeah. It's fine. Maybe like one or two in this one. I'm like, oh, take it or leave it. Yeah. I think it. I think it's fine. I think it's solid. If they're going to make any more, which they will, because it's, it's just. Part three, I would yeah. like to. I'd like to know what they could do with that. What, mm. Where they can go with it? Because almost the in the. I liked the uh, country remote mm. twinkly setting of the first one and the second one. Um, and almost the more you try to explain the invasion yeah. and see what did the government do? Did they mm. blow, blow up the bridges? The more we learn about it, inherently, the less yeah. I need to know about it. Yeah. Um, because all you need to know is that, that they're monsters. They will kill you if yeah. they have sound. Um, but yeah, Quiet Place Day 1. It's okay. It's okay. It's uh, all right. If you guys wanted to write in your thoughts, as always, we'd love to hear them. You can send them into hello at popkitchenpodcast.com. Also, Joseph Quinn, an actor who he made his name in Stranger Things season four. Really liked him in that. It was one of those examples where it's like, oh, here's an actor breaking through. Yeah. Uh, it was great. And he's going to go on to be the human torch in the, the, the Fantastic Four. Um, and he, he's, yeah, he's perfectly good in this, even though I think his character kind of underserves him. But I had this one when, when he was in Stranger Things, but I'm looking at him and I'm like, you have the same face as Daisy Edgar Jones. Oh, you have okay. the exact same face. I see what you mean. You, there, there's a couple yeah. of times with the dark, really dark eyes and I'm like, you could be brother and sister. Yeah. There's moments when I wanted to be like, aren't you in Twisters? <laughs> aren't you? Just, uh, if, you're going to, if you haven't seen it yet, go and, see, go and see Quiet Place Day One and look at Joseph Quinn and be like Daisy Edgar Jones. Yeah. That's what Peter Nyong'o though, please. Hollywood. Yeah, great. I, and I've, I feel like I've missed her yeah. since us. Since us and sorry, Sarah's around. She was doing. She was in Black Panther a bit. I'm trying to think what oh, else yeah. she's been in. Probably that. Yeah, Black Panther. Get, get, get the Peter Nyong'o out there. Great. Really, really, really good. Really great. Um, but yeah, guys, that was quite a place day one. As always, let us know your thoughts. Bye.